Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you caught my recent video about a couple awesome products that Creality sent me to try out, then you probably have a good idea of what's coming up. In this video, I'll be telling you all about Creality's new laser engraver slash cutter, the Falcon 2. In addition to what's included in the standard in the box list of parts from the product description page of the official Creality website, they were kind enough to send me both styles of rotary attachments listed for this machine. They also included both the small and large honeycomb grids, as well as the corresponding aluminum sheets that are used to protect your tabletop from burn through when you're using the machine to through cut material. All of these accessories and more are available for purchase separately from Creality's official website page for this product. Also, this product is available in 5, 12, and 40 watt configurations. The 22 watt diode laser has a spot size of one tenth of a millimeter. The cutting head gets its power by combining four 6 watt lasers into one columnar beam. Sure, 4 times 6 is 24, but they must be accounting for the loss that occurs in optics where the beam converges. The laser module comes with a protective shroud that helps keep errant laser light from reflecting off the material being cut and into the operator area. That being said, it's important to wear laser goggles rated for the wavelength of your machine when you're in the area of operation. The cutting head has an intelligent monitoring system that monitors for proper airflow, flame, and lens contamination. This machine also comes with a small air compressor to assist with cutting through thicker materials. The airflow can either be controlled with the dial on the side of the machine or with a software setting in Lightburn. The machine is advertised to be able to cut through 15 mm solid wood, 10 mm black acrylic, or two and a half thousandths stainless steel shim stock in one pass. Of course, it'll cut all your normal organics, leather, cardboard, plywood, and most plastics. It'll even engrave glass. Kind of. I've seen a lot of other creators use this or similar devices as part of their business to laser ablaze the powder coated surface of stainless steel flasks and tumblers in order to create amazing artwork for sale in their online stores. It's a pretty easy way of getting into making custom signage and merch. Depending upon the outside profile of the cylindrical products that you're likely to be engraving, you may want to opt for the three jaw chuck pro version of the rotary attachment over the two roller contact roller attachment. If you'll be primarily engraving cylindrical objects that don't have a taper to them, then the two roller contact rotary might be the best fit for your application. The setup with this accessory is super simple and there's no need to mirror or scale the y-axis of your artwork in order to set it up and use it. Unlike with the three jaw pro rotary attachment where you'll need to mirror and scale the y-axis of your artwork relative to the diameter of the object you're engraving. It's a little more setup but on tapered items it's really the setup to get. Both of these rotary attachments are great accessories for this laser engraver. However, your use case will determine which one better suits your particular needs. With this tool, you can even do what's referred to as colorful engraving on stainless steel products. That's where the diode laser heats up the material to different temperatures and creates a variety of colors in the oxidation. Of course, that's going to take some trial and error figuring out the feeds and speeds for the particular thickness of the material you're working with. Thankfully, this process can be simplified by making a feeds and speeds test grid in Lightburn and trying it out on the different thicknesses of material that you're using for your projects. Of course, the coloring process only works with stainless steel. The Falcon 2 laser has a working area of 400 by 415. For interface software, you have a couple of choices. You can either run with Laser Gerbil or Lightburn in order to convert your roster or vector files into G code for the machine. On the included micro SD card, there's a folder titled Software. In that folder is a link to the download page of Lightburn. Keep in mind that the download is only good for the 30 day trial. And after that, you'll need to purchase the software for $60 in order to keep using it. But that $60 does buy a permanent standalone license, which is awesome. 
If that's not your deal, Laser Gerbil is totally adequate to run this machine. It just isn't as feature rich as Lightburn, but it is free. So you load your files onto the machine, either with the supplied USB cable connected to your laptop or with the included micro SD card. Keep in mind, if you're going to be running it off the SD card, you can only have one file at a time saved to the root directory. Since the machine doesn't have a digital user interface with a screen, the machine automatically loads and runs the first file on that directory. If you have the machine connected by the USB cable, then you're directly parsing the file from your laptop. And with that, you can monitor the cut path and order of operations. Both softwares support SVG, PNG, JPEG, bitmap, and DXF formats. And when you're engraving a roster art image, the machine has a resolution of 254 dpi. I've been considering engraving my logo onto drink glasses and stainless steel tumblers in order to explore the merch avenue as a means of funding my project, since YouTube and AdSense have kind of been stepchilding me at the moment. I'm also exploring making laser or blade retro blueprints of my hands and finger components as artwork for the new studio. It took me a little bit to figure out the workaround about needing to paint the surface of the glass in order to get it to engrave. When I engrave glass on my CO2 laser, I can directly engrave the image without any coating. But with the diode laser at 455 nanometers instead of the 10600 nanometer wavelength of the CO2, you need something to capture the heat and then ablate the surface of the glass in order to get it to engrave. That's why I say it kind of engraves glass. It works, but it's probably tailored more for laser ablation of powder coated objects rather than direct engraving on glass. Something else that I'd like to try is laser part marking on the 3D printed parts that I get from JLC PCB. I'm still figuring out what the machine's capabilities really are and how they best integrate into what I have going on. I'll be sure to let you know what I find out in an upcoming video. Of course, if the sign making and ablation blueprints work out, you'll likely see those in the background of the new studio in the next couple weeks. That's just about all I have for this video. Please remember to like, subscribe, share my videos. I know it gets super old hearing me say this at the end of every video, but hopefully with your help, I can get back in the good graces of the algorithm. If you have time, help me out and leave a comment in the comment section. Thanks for watching. You go to the best kitty? Osiris is dead, everything went down.